Might save some time if we split up. Probably would. As late as it's getting. Tell you what. I go down further down the line and you uh, follow up here. That's what I figured. What's that? Well, that just gives me about twice as much fence to check as you. Well, you're young and healthy. It'll be dark before I'm through. Maybe I'll spend the night in the lion shack. Come on in the morning. Suit yourself. What can I do for you? Remove your weapon. Look, if you fellas are figuring on robbing me, well, I gotta... Silence! Now hear my words. On the morrow, you'll stand before a tribunal of my people to be tried on a charge of murder. Murder? There's no more to be said. Now get on your horse. Look, mister, I don't know what kind of loco talk you're making, but I... Oh. Enough! He'll be punished properly at the trial. Now put him on his horse. and we must travel far. That's three. Now, you want to try for four? You just caught me when I was very tired from riding a fence all day. <laughs> Saddest story I've ever heard. Yeah. Isn't Heath here yet? Dinner will be spoiled if we wait much longer. No, and as late as it is, I don't know if he'll be coming in at all. Well, we'd better eat then. Although, I must say, I don't like the idea of his eating from a tin can in that lime shack. Especially if he knew we were having a beef roast. The truth of the matter is, I think Heath was looking for an excuse to spend the night out on the range. You're probably right. Heath told me that... Once in a while, he likes to be off by himself do a little thinking. Says it makes him appreciate it more when he gets back. It 
is. Pig! Kill him. Kill him right now! You'll find no gratification in such an action, my child. Yes, I would. Silence! When the sun rises, then will he be judged. And punished according to the laws of our people. So be it. Now fetch him some food, child. Over the cage. He's got. All oh, right. Uh oh, looky here. Hey, that's real nice. Give me that. How much money you got there, Brother Cyrus? It counts to better than twenty dollars. Look. Hey, ain't that a lot for him? Cyrus, well, five years of living with a man as thick as her husband was in this long period of mourning, well, it ain't good for either her or you. I know, Brother Benjamin. I know. And I aim to speak to Brother Hammond about that. convened Heath Barkley to judge you on a charge of murder. Have you anything to say before sentence is passed? I don't know what this is all about. But if you think I murdered somebody, then you should turn me over to the sheriff. No. You killed one of our people. Therefore, you should be tried by our laws. I am no judge, and they're your jurors. I tell you, there's some mistake. I didn't kill anybody. You killed this woman's husband. When? Five days ago. Mister, you're wrong. Five days ago, I was home working on my family's ranch, and I can prove that. He died five days ago from a bullet you put in him five years ago. What are you talking about? His name was Joshua, and he was a man of peace. Yet on the third day of March in the year 1872, while passing by night on the road near White Springs, you accosted him, attempted to rob him, and then shot him. If you deny this, you lie. I don't deny I was around White Springs about that time. And I shot at someone. But the man was trying to rob me. I was bedded down for the night, and he was trying to steal my horse. No. Silence! Then you admit you shot Joshua. I only admit that I shot at someone. I don't know who. I don't even know if I hit him or not. Your mark was true. The bullet lodged in his back. It could not be removed. It slowly spread poison in his system until that poison killed him. He was paralyzed from it. He had no feeling from the waist down. He feel nothing, nothing at all. He couldn't walk, he couldn't do anything. For five years he was like that. I had to carry him. Every place he went, like a little baby. But can't you understand, I didn't murder him. I was only protecting myself and what was mine. It's Joshua's word against yours. But he's dead. Look, can't you see I'm not the kind of man that goes around robbing and killing people? Doesn't anybody believe me? No, 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 no. What say you, brethren? Does he speak the truth? So be it. Heath Barkley, you have been found guilty as charged. I tell you, I'm not guilty. Your sentence has been prescribed. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. Hand for hand and foot for foot. Therefore, as you have taken away life, you must replace it with your own. You can't kill me for something I didn't do. I did not say you'd be put to death. I said you must replace it with your own life. You will replace the one that's been taken from us. What do you mean by that? In time, perhaps you will learn the goodness of our ways. We are a simple people. We ask for little and take only what providence provides. We live in righteous fear and look upon one another for sustenance. You, therefore, will provide as Joshua provided. I don't understand what you're talking about. 
By your hand, this woman was left without support or provision. Accordingly now, you will serve her as you direct it. What do you mean, as I'm directed? You can't make me serve her or anybody else. You will do as you are told, work as you are directed, and live out your days in penance. In doing so, you have been given your only hope for salvation. What's it going to be, Brother Berkeley? <clears throat> you going to behave yourself so as we can get along? Tell him what to do. I need wood for my fire. It gets cold at night, and I like a nice big fire. Come on. This is hard to figure. Why? Why, Heath didn't get to this part of the fence. I left him just a little beyond here. Maybe he went after some new wire. Uh, if he wanted wire, to come home for it. He wouldn't have stayed at the line shack. Might be trying to get in some extra bunk time. Uh-huh. Well, now, we'll just see to that. And on the other hand, maybe he isn't. Enough? I said I liked a big fire. That's right, you did. Well, I can't say as I blame you. Warm fire can be kind of comforting to someone who's alone. Hey, oops. I'm sorry. What for? That you lost your man. That you're alone. No woman should be like that. Listen, don't you try to soft talk me. I just said I'm sorry. And I am. water like it was real easy to get. Well, it ain't. It's got to be carried up from the lake. So from now on, that'll be your job. Now, you get back into your cage. Evening, Bettina. You got enough wood? A little while. I brought us food. 
Well, I'd say that's right fine if I was a little hog. Yeah, lie down there and slop it up. <laughs> If you kill him, you'll be doing him a favor. All right. I don't want to do him no favors. Bettina, sit down. I want to talk. What's about? About you and me. About what I've been saying to Brother Hemet. It, it ain't right. Us two being the only ones here about that ain't... Bettina, you know I got a feeling for you, don't you? You forget I'm in mourning for a year. Well, Brother Hammett could fix that if you was of a mind. I don't think so. Time, woman. Just give it a little more time. I sent Collins out to scrape up some more men. He's going to meet us down at the West Gate. We'll find him. Don't you worry, we'll find him. It's been two nights, Jared. We know. you got to remember, we got a lot of mighty thirsty horses back to camp. So you just keep right on holding. You and me and Brother Hammett's going to ride down the valley tonight. What about him? If we ain't back by morning, Brother David will keep him busy. I reckon her seeing him work like that kind of satisfies the hate she's got for him. Just so it don't satisfy it too much. Where are they going? Hunting. At night? There's fresh meat in the valley. I mean, there are cattle herds in this valley. Straight all over at this time of year. If a dumb animal has got it to us, we accept it as a gift of Providence. Here's your food. Providence, huh? Well, that kind of thinking might explain a lot of things. What do you mean? Nothing. But if I wait long enough, maybe Providence will provide me with something a little more digestible. Good night. Come along, Brother David.
You waste your time. There's nothing under that dirt but rock. Besides, you couldn't get far anyway. Cyrus's dogs won't allow it. They'd catch you and tear you apart if you tried to escape. Is that for me? Providence moves in mysterious ways. You'd be no good to me or anyone else if you didn't eat. That's the kind of stuff Hamid lets you read? Nobody knows I have it. I, I found it. You been to places like that? San Francisco. Barbary Coast, sure, lots of times. Is it a place of sin? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Those women. You find them attractive? Well, I suppose so. Of course, there's a lot of different ways a woman is attractive to a man. Am I attractive? I'd say so. Two men like Cyrus and some of those others. I don't care about them. I'm asking you. Well, I might be able to give you a better answer if you'd clean yourself up and started looking the way a woman should. Evening, Victoria. Uh, still no luck. Oh. Now, Nick and Jared asked me to come by and tell you they're going to bed down the lion shack tonight. And we'll all start looking again at sunup. Mm. Well, thank you very much. I guess I'll go to bed now. Good night. whoever you are, before you're shamed. You hear me? Kill me if they can't find me. I'll tell them. No, you won't. Not if you're any kind of a woman, you won't. Well, then you know what kind of woman I am. Then you can find out. If you say I, I can speak to Hemi. No. Please. I'll, I'll do anything you want. I'm sorry. They'll find you. They'll bring you back. Maybe you'll be sorry. <laughs> Buckley. He attacked David and he ran off over there. 
You take this road. I'll circle above. Bartley, you move one step closer to that horse and I'll be forced to blow your brains out. Justice with mercy, Cyrus. Let him down. Now understand me. We are not of a savage nature, but rather a gentle people. For we believe that forgiveness is better than revenge or punishment. I hope by now that you have learned the hopelessness of trying to escape. For well, the next time, your punishment will not be so simple. Seeing as how you people are so gentle, so understanding. My family. Their minds are to be set at ease. At least let them know they don't have to worry about me anymore. I mean, you'd expect the same consideration, wouldn't you? It would weigh heavy on my conscience if others suffered because of your sins. What have you that they may know would recognize? I had a coin. On a chain. He took it. Give it to me. I will consider the matter. I'll see him to his tasks. And be wary. All right, move. You ain't even finished hauling water. Move! It's only right that his family be set to ease. It's like he's just vanished. We're running out of places to look. You sound like you're giving up. Nobody's giving up, Mother. It's just that the men, well, they're getting tired. They have to want to get back Well, to then work. get other riders. We already have. There'll be a dozen men here ready to ride at sunup. Lucky coin. The living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. You would do well to put Heath Barkley from your memory. He is as a dead man. Oh, no. Now, oh, wait a minute. It says as a dead man. Not is a dead man.
Hey, seeing as how he's so close to Stockton, what do you say we go on in and have a little refreshment? I say that's a good idea, a real good idea. Sleep. I brought you some coffee. Please, I, I want to speak to you. Some other time. I say again what I said by the lake. I could make life better for you. I could speak to Emmett. What about? But you're, you're taking me for your wife? Is it so much to your dislike? I bathed for you, you sold me. And my hair, I washed it and combed it. Do you like it? Yes, I do. And you like me as a woman. There's a lot more goes into being a woman than just taking a bath and combing her hair. I feel like a woman. When men look at me, I feel like a woman. What man? Cyrus, some of those others? They're not men, they're animals. My husband was just like them. I married him because I was told to. I didn't love him, I couldn't. For a long time, I thought I could never love anyone, any man. Because I thought they were all like that. But now I'm not sure. You looked at me by the lake and you said, I'm sorry. Please, I don't want your pity. Wake up, child. Wake up, I say. You gotta understand, Brother Hammond, it wasn't his fault. He partook of liquor, did he not? Well, that's what I mean. It was the liquor. You know how it makes him. He couldn't help himself. That'll be over, little Benjamin. Ah, oh, my child. What is it? Did you not sleep well? I, I was restless. Ah, oh, it's understandable, very understandable. Considering the trying times you've endured, a woman all alone without. My child, I've decided it'd be wrong for you to suffer any longer. A woman is only made whole by the bonds of marriage. And that's how it should be. You wish me to remarry so soon? I wish only for your happiness. Therefore, I decree that your period of mourning be ended. And on the morrow's sun, I will bind you in wedlock to Brother Cyrus. Cyrus? Who else among us is without a woman? Or she without a man? It is ordained. Come now. Be happy for your salvation from loneliness. As you wish. That's better. Now, 
about the money your departed husband left you. I believe it was $100, was it not? Yes. I'll need $50 of it as a dowry for Brother yes. Cyrus. Now. Now? I don't understand. He's been put in jail in Stockton. The money is necessary for his release. And what better use could the money be put to than in behalf of one's betrothed? I'll get it. May I go with you? I need cloth for a proper wedding dress. I'll have the wagon hitched. Be ready in five minutes now. about it, this gives us reason to hope. I'll round up the men and meet you out at the ranch in about an hour, all right? We'll be ready. Now you go purchase your cloth while I get Sarah's. bottle's a dollar. A dollar. <laughs> Stuff sure just smell good. Mm. You sure do have a lot of nice things in this, this store. Why don't you take a look around? You don't have to buy anything you don't want. Thank you. Peace, brother. This cloth sure is pretty. I'm afraid it's very costly. It isn't cloth, it's pure silk. I need something like that for my wedding dress. See, I want it to look like this. Oh. Bettina, we're ready to go. I I'm sorry, I'm still looking. She was just showing me a picture of the dress she wants to make. A dress like that is not for you is the cloth of a scarlet woman. This is more fitting. What is the price? Three dollars. Pay for it and keep us waiting no longer. I'll get your side. Please, I, I, I have to hurry. Sandra had that dress made for this photograph last year. There's no doubt about it. It had to be torn from the family photograph. Well, Heath carried one around like that in his wallet, only smaller, same as me. What I'd like to know is where the girl get it. Fred, have you got any idea where they might be camping now? Well, this being the dry season of the year, I'd expect they'd be back in the hills near the lake. At least that's where they camped two years ago. Well, you take your boys and uh, try Blue Lake, and we'll take ours and get you. All right. You miss me today, Brother Berkeley? Well, don't you worry. Because after Bettina and me gets married in the morning, we'll have the rest of the day. Just you and me. And the next, and the next after. For just as long as you say. Bettina. 
Bettina, you hear me? I'm in bed, Cyrus. What do you want? Well, I come to say good night. Thank you, good night. That's all? I'm very tired, Cyrus. I I'm going to sleep now. Well, all right. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Call it for freedom. Is it too much? Well, considering the rest of this place, no. It's kind of nice. Cyrus should be pleased. I didn't buy it for Cyrus. I bought it. Well, to prove to you that I can be a woman. Bettina, you are a woman. It's just that. What? That I'm not enough of a woman? You could teach me. I can learn. It takes a man to teach a woman, doesn't it? The others, Cyrus, and even the man that was my husband. You were right when you said they're animals. But you're marrying Cyrus tomorrow. I can't marry him if I'm not here, can I? You'd run. To where? Anywhere you take me. I know where they keep the key to the padlock. We need horses. I can get them. What about the dogs? I'll take care of them. Right. Understand one thing. In case you want to change your mind. Now, there are laws, civilized laws, that'll keep them from taking you back. And now see to it. And I'll help you get a new start. But as for me, I'm not part of the bargain. You're a man, Eve Barkley. The only man I've ever known. And I'm learning already. I think... I think I would be disappointed if you were part of the bargain. Let's try Pine Lake. It's two miles on up.
a dress. I have another one. A pretty one. All picked out. But him. She's dead. Him. It's his fault she's dead. All right, hold it right there. Throw him down, boys. to be weird on tomorrow. Why? Why, in the name of justice, couldn't a bullet have found you instead of her? escape, wasn't she? Why? Why? For five years, her heart cried out for vengeance. You're wrong. It wasn't vengeance. You corrupted her. The days you spent with her, you stole into her mind like the Serpent of Eden. You made her see evil as good. No. I just gave her a chance to see herself as she could be. As a woman. You turned her against her own people against the memory of her own husband. And against living here in darkness. The darkness is outside in your world, where sin and temptation blot out God's light. We kept Bettina away from Satan's reach. And away from life. There's a lot that's bad in the world. But hiding from it isn't the answer. You've got to fight it. And in the meantime, enjoy all the good. You see, Bettina wasn't trying to free me nearly as much as she was trying to free herself and begin to live. You understand, I have to report what happened here to the sheriff. I understand. <laughs> 